Okay. Um, I'm, uh, this, my name is Frank Benish. I'm the chairman of the GBA. I'm going to call the, uh, this meeting to order. Um, this meeting will be in, is in two parts. First, there's a public hearing in which uh, the applicant, Rob Rubel, um, uh, has an opportunity to talk about what he wants and why. Um, and then uh, interested parties, uh, about ours generally, uh, can speak uh, in support or against uh, uh, of that. Uh, during that entire process, the Board of Adjustment can ask questions. Um, and then I'll close the public hearing, and then the Board will deliberate. We might reach a decision tonight. We may not. Uh, but in which case we adjourn and do whatever we have to do. It might mean consulting with an attorney, it might mean trying to write a decision, and then we would reconvene and finish it. Um, so um, with that, uh, any before we go into any in the hearing, any comments from people on the team? On the board? No. Okay. So um, I will... Uh, Open the public hearing. Um, uh, we have four of our five permanent members here, um, uh, and why don't? Uh, and then, because Gino is missing, uh, Martha will be the uh, alternate uh, who will stand in. So we have five people voting to take an action to grant a variance. We need three of the five people. Uh, why don't you just? Introduce yourselves. I'm Frank Benish. Joan Aubrey. I'm Dave Metesky. Brian Walker. Martha Benish. Dave Mason. And so Dave Metesky is the one who is not going to be a vote voting member at the end. <coughs> and with that, uh, Rob, I would, I'd invite you to, uh, you're welcome to bring, sit down, come up to the table, and we can talk about what you're trying to do and, and um, uh, uh, what questions we have. Uh, yeah, you can. Yep. Well, how, how about sitting right there? Because yeah, move the chair over a little bit if you can. Slide over a little bit. So, yeah. yeah. This is for Martha Tobin if she gets here in time to take minutes. All right. Am I going to ruin somebody's jacket? No. 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 Yeah. And I'm uh, I'm going to suggest. Um, it's my jacket. Well, before we get before we actually get you involved, I have to report back on that notice and everything. Is, yeah. So um, this meeting was noticed. The hearing was noticed. Uh, there was a notice up on the bulletin board um, on e-news. Uh, it was there was a uh, notice in the Conway Sun, and all the abutters uh, were sent a certified letter advising of the hearing, and we have responses back from um, uh, the O'Connells, at Kieran's, I believe, and McKechnie. Um, and the other abutters uh, have not yet responded, though I got no letters back, so you know, they're just in the mail, I suppose. Uh, so we had the appropriate notice. Um, I'm also going to suggest, um, well, first, everybody on the ZBA, um, did you get the supplemental letter that had this drawing in it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, uh, in which uh, Robert... Um, indicates that the intrusion on the setback, as I interpreted this, was as much as uh, some significant portion of the garage, perhaps uh, probably at least half, and perhaps substantially all of the garage is within the setback. Um, we don't precisely know, I think, from what we have in front of us, exactly what the proposed setback, intrusion on the setback is. It's you know, somewhere presumably between 25 to 50 feet of the garage into the setback. So I'm, I'm going to suggest that we proceed with the presumption that, um, you know, some substantial portion of the garage is in the setback and that, you know, rather than uh, asking for a survey or something, and then if the board is disposed to, if the board decides not to grant a variance, um, then we can. It ends there. If it seems that we are disposed to do so, that we adjourn and and have uh, have uh, a more 
precise measurement done as to exactly how much, uh, how far into the setback there is. So whatever variance we would then grant would be specific to that. I don't think our deliberations I, um, are going to be affected by whether or not it's half the garage or the full amount of the garage. The, I think the uh, legal issues are the same. Um, so that, that will hopefully save some time so we won't be arguing or discussing how much the garage is in the setback or not, um, because in the end, we're not going to be able to answer that question anyway. And I think it just will allow things to move a lot faster. So with that, Robert, um, the floor is yours. Everybody's read this, um, um, and so you don't have to read it, but if you have comments or kind of general overview of what you're trying to do and why you want to do it, uh, or why you're doing it this way, um, that'd be probably a good place to start. And then undoubtedly there will be questions for you. Okay. Um, yeah, so in terms of the setback um, from the diagram that, that Frank just held up, the, the road is essentially above where the garage is going to be. And so the one edge of the garage would be about 25 feet from the road. And the garage is going to be about 24 feet wide, but it's going to be at an angle. So it'll be the back corner that would get as close as 25 feet to the road. So that's really the dimension. I would expect about half of the garage is probably within the setback. When, by the time, if you ever measured it, how much of the garage, how much of the floor plan of the garage would be within the setback, it's probably about 50 50. I, I think the other area of uncertainty is the setback actually gets measured from the right of way and not the pavement. Uh, okay. uh, and so exactly where the pavement is in the right-of-way, um, I think it's a 50-foot right-of-way. The pavement's probably 25 feet or so wide, more or less. So, you know, it, it, if the pavement's, if the road, if the pavement's on the edge of the right-of-way near your house, there's no big difference. It could be, or, I mean, it, it's, there's, there's some uncertainty, but and that, this is what I was trying to, Okay, and not I get, get into a lengthy okay. discussion on what might be there. Is the right of way going to be determined by the actual stakes that are in the ground that, for the property boundary? Yeah, it'd be, yeah. It, it would be whatever. Well, it'd be determined by a survey using those stakes, yes. Okay. All right. So it's, yeah, so it, it would be your property really boundary. Know. We don't know exactly. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, so let me back up. I just tried to cover off some, some questions. So. Um, you know, my understanding is that, you know, anybody that, you know, as a property owner, um, that you should be allowed to enjoy your property and make modifications to it and so on. It's a fundamental, um, a fundamental right of property ownership in the United States. Um, and to the extent that any municipal zoning rules and um, or regulations um, unreasonably interfere with that, then and they can be waived, if you will, and that's why we're here. So that's kind of my understanding. The zoning board of adjustment is, is here to kind of look, is, is my property somehow unique that it, that, uh, you know, that the rules would be unfair. So if you look at my property, I've got over 500 feet, or 530 feet of my property is actually ordered by the road. And so, you know, when you take into account that there's a 50-foot setback from that for any buildings, um, and you take a look at my whole lot, which is 1.4 acres, which is a little over 60,000 square feet, if you look at all the setbacks, you look at the 50-foot setback, which is the primary one all, all the way along the road, and then 25 feet on each of the other boundaries of the property, I've got 37,000 square feet, uh, which is 0.85 acres out of 1.4 acres that's unbuildable, <clears throat> notwithstanding the slope and, uh, you know, because the whole property is on a hill. Uh, so notwithstanding that. Um, so in looking at where I could possibly build a garage, uh, the best location is where I've proposed doing it. It, it would be dug into the hill, um, and uh, you know, in terms of whether it's in the spirit of the uh, the regulations, uh, I don't 
fully understand what the spirit of the regulations in terms of why the setback's 50 feet is. Um, and that might be something that you'll be clarifying as we go on. Um, you know, I don't feel it's contrary to the public interest to build the garage there. In fact, I think, you know, it enhance the value of the neighborhood by enhancing the property value. Um, Could I ask a question? Of course. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, why, why is it that you feel that that location is the best place to put the garage as opposed to maybe to the left of your house as you look down the driveway? Um, the proximity to uh, the house itself um, and being able to get from the garage to the house, um, my feeling is that it's a better location. Could just, based on that, can you just describe the, you know, putting the garage out here, what, I mean, where's your entrance and so forth? Is that what you're considering? Yeah, because the entrance to the house is here, so uh, right. we were actually thinking of you know, having a walkway. May I comment on that? I'm asking, uh, well, at this point, Robert. Uh, I, but as um, the potential builder. Well, you can speak. Yeah, I, I think you're welcome as part of Robert's team to yes. speak. Yes, Robbie. You, you're Robbie, welcome, Robbie, you're welcome to. I might just point out, Dave, that um, as you face the driveway, looking down on the left, it drops off precipitously. It's one of the biggest, probably the biggest reasons, and you can't really get close to the house on that side. Uh, the other side where it does slope, and as Rob said, it's going to have to take some excavation to get in there. But it's certainly by far the least for two, two evils. It, it goes off at a pretty steep angle. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. But it's a reasonable suggestion that we did consider of building it where you yeah. asked. Not a suggestion, just a question as to why you thought that was the best spot. It's okay. Okay, great. Um, did you look at there any costs associated with that? How much would it cost to put it over to the no. left instead of the right? No. No, no. no. but no. That's in, from my experience, it's huge. Okay. Double. Okay. Okay. Um, so, in, in terms of whether, you know, this you know, a variance would do substantive justice, um, substantial dust justice. It's like most of the houses in that neighborhood have garages, so I'm hoping to be able to, to build one as well. So it wouldn't be inconsistent with the, with the <coughs> um, That's pretty much all that I, you know, would say in terms of an explanation. Um, I think, you know, as we get older, we're a little bit concerned about not having a garage, and that's really part of the reason for for considering that is being able to uh, have some shelter and be able to, you know, unload groceries and things like everybody else does. But. Well, uh, continuing with the question that Dave started, uh, did you consider simply placing the garage actually on the current driveway? Why doesn't that work? Um, it would it would basically interfere with the the view of the house and from the house if it was on the, the current the view up the uh, up the driveway. You mean? Well, the current view. Yeah. We were trying to set it back so that it wouldn't interfere with the, kind of the look of the property. So I don't think it's. I mean, we discussed it and ourselves and thought that it would not look very nice in the neighborhood to have a garage sitting in the middle of the driveway as you drive up the street, because that's really the view you get as you drive in, as you look at, at the house. So we were hoping to have the garage placed more or less out of that line of sight. Frank, the driveway also, as I said, on the left-hand side, it drops off, the right-hand side it goes up. So the driveway's fairly <coughs> until it widens out a little, just as it gets to the house. And that's how the reason for putting it close, in close proximity to the house. Uh, there's also, uh, visually, most of the vegetation on that uphill side is small, small, not 
and visually, you really know, wouldn't have much of an impact on the road as you drive by you barely get a glimpse of it. This is a double car garage you're proposing? Yeah. And you've separate it from the house. You, did you consider moving it closer to the house to minimize? It's, it's, it's as close to the house as we thought reasonable. And and 15 the feet? There's a gas tank hmm. um, that we, that's only about 10 feet from the house, the corner of the house, and we're very close to it. We, we cut it as close as I thought it would make sense to go to that gas tank. That's a Below ground tank? Yeah, broken. Yeah. Okay. Have you um, considered that if you cut into the side of the hill, you're going to have to reinforce the road above it? I mean, you're going to, you just can't cut into the dirt in the hill. I wouldn't think that there's a road that goes by there that mm -hmm. you're going to have to take into consideration in terms of reinforcement. Mm -hmm. uh, that certainly would be a consideration. Uh, my take on that is I love my the excavation work to determine that that's their expertise. But you would be responsible for it, I understand. <coughs> Building inspector will also because the codes address the top. Yeah, the way that I visualize that aspect is that that whole area would be poured concrete. So it would, that it would go right up to ground level. So that back, the back corner of the garage is pretty much top level of the garage is almost going to be a ground level, so that whole area would, would actually be poured. So you'd have like eight, eight feet or so of height, so there, there would be no, um, and then the, the ground would be against it. It would be filled in. But it probably be I don't know what it would be called. It would probably be folders right against the hill side of it. But again, I leave that judgment to the contractor, the preservation contractor, Well, one of the things I think I may be struggling with is really understanding. Well, there's, there's, there's the concept that the, the setback should apply to everybody um, in, in the same way, and the variance exists as a mechanism to grant relief to for those properties that are somehow unique or special, given compared with all the surrounding properties who do have to comply, would still have to comply with zoning ordinance. So I think you're making the argument that, give, that you're unique compared to the other properties around you or in the neighborhood based on, <coughs> I think based on the fact that you're, you're, you have a rectang mostly rectangular property and the frontage is along the long way, not uh, long side of the property, not the short side of the property boundary. Is that is that fair, or am I? It's yeah. I mean, if you t talk about it being roughly rectangular, if you look at the road being here, the road curves around, forming actually two sides of the rectangle, yeah. measuring 530 feet. The surrounding properties have, I mean, the one right beside me to the north of me has 150 some feet of road frontage. So you start looking around, I mean, I have 530, and that's that's the real issue that jumps off the page when you look at it. The disadvantage of that is that your lot is not as deep as somebody else's lot might be, right? So you don't have a lot of space Correct. going in depth. Yes. It's very difficult to get anything within the setbacks of 25 feet to lines other than the road and 50 feet to the road. Right, yeah. So the northern, the north side of my property is 418 feet long from, from the road, but the other side is um, uh, 100, 157. How deep is the line? That's what I meant. So 157. 157. 157. Right, yeah. So, so yeah, so my, the, the northern a butter has 418 feet, you know, 
on, on that side, and then they have, like, on the road, they have 150 satellites. Okay. Okay. So, you rectangle turned in the other direction, basically. Correct. Yeah, so there's a lot, you know, mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying, and because mine is sitting on the corner, yeah. I've got the road surrounding me, so all of the satellite is in there, and that's really, yeah. that's what makes my property unique, and that's really the whole point of it. When was the house built? How old is this house? 88. As far as, as, far as I know, it was 88. And when did you buy it? 2006. So the zoning laws haven't changed since you bought the house? I honestly don't know. Maybe a bit of a but I don't think anything. I don't think it's changed. No. Right. Now. Setbacks have been the same, same. during the so time period. hasn't changed. Right. Even the original covenants that ran with that subdivision, which has since expired, had a 50 foot Setback of 25 well, I have two questions on that. Um, so we're looking right here. Yeah, this is coming up, yeah, up the steep hill here, and then it bends around. The way this road does curve around, and that his driveway was put in at an angle to yeah. it this way, yeah. and it didn't help his cause. No. So. But you're going to be building the garage close to the house, so even if, if you can, that's well, no, I'm going to hurt here. Huh? Uh, why don't you take that one back? I can probably show it on this as well. You. That even though you can't use this land over here, you were never going to use that land anyway. The only land that theoretically is right in through here that, as it as it stands, you could build on. This is a little diagram idea. I'm not going to fight yeah. over the setbacks, right. but you're yeah. going to be building around the house somewhere. Yes. And you've got your septic back here, right. so right. that you Behind can't the go there. So really, your radius right. is really comes right around here. That's correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that, that's somewhat irrelevant to things. Because of the way it drops off, too, here, there's a very narrow um, uh, access along the house that allows you to get out back if that something so has to be serviced. Yeah, the, um, the other questions of Robert? Uh, yeah, I just, I guess, one on the old rules. There's an easement that goes across your property for 10 feet. Um, I, it's I, on your deed. Yes, yeah, there's something there, but I, don't, I honestly don't know what and it is. I thought it was on, this, is it on the southern side? I don't know what's, I, my impression was that from the map that you gave us was next to the right of way for the town. And I'm just wondering, easements usually have owners, and the association used to own the easement. And now, if there's no association, who owns it? Good question. Because we can't, I don't think we can authorize somebody building on an easement if it's part of this whole thing. And that again has to be measured out by people. And the deed of the association says that nobody can build within 50 feet of the right of way, and that's in a deed. And there's been no, I mean, I know it doesn't exist anymore, I understand that. Right. But there's been no closure. So we can't turn around and say, oh, somebody said that Jesus covenants. Covenants. Yeah, these covenants. Yeah, these are covenants, yeah. And they expire. Under, under law, uh, I believe the covenants expire after X number of years unless they renew. So right. So yeah. the covenants may be there, but if, they, if they're old and they haven't been renewed, then they're not relevant. What about the easement, though? I don't know about the easement. That's a good, I don't know what the easement is. That, that's is the, the one easement that's... 10 feet along the road? Yeah, 10 feet along the right away. <laughs> So what's the purpose of the easement? You know? Utilities. Utilities. And it was owned by the association, but now the association doesn't exist anymore. So I didn't. So it sounds like the easement doesn't exist. Well, but right. somebody it's has to own the easement. It's you can't. Easement. It just doesn't disappear. Yeah. That's the problem. Is it a utility easement for co-op, energy co-op? I think it was multiple things, but the ownership seemed to be. Again, I'm not a lawyer, but it seemed to be with the deed with the association. Now the association doesn't exist anymore. 
See, our association self-renews unless we, we it's different from this. Okay, then, then if if it was proposed that the garage was going to be built on the easement, that would be a question. Um, mm -hmm. But it looks as though if the easement is 10 feet from the edge of the right away, the garage is not proposed to be built on the easement. Well, but close. certainly that's it's something that has to be looked at. It has to be looked at. I'm not making any yeah. other than one of those issues that have to be looked at along the way. Yeah, I, I've got it right here. So it is it is along the, so if you look at this diagram, because north is this way, it's along the south, the southern part, and easterly part, interestingly enough. So there's a 10-foot easement here, and there's a 10-foot easement there. But it's not after the 50-foot piece. It's from the edge of the property. No. From the edge of from the edge of the property. It says uh, along the easterly and southerly side of the above described premises. Yeah, so that would be. Oh, the said that sides that being that which abut the right of way. Right. So that would be your yeah. land that abuts the right of way is a ten foot easement. Oh, that's not how I. That's the premises. Okay. Is your land. That's the land that the deeds right. refer to. So they're saying a ten foot. Right of way abuts the right. A ten foot easement abuts the right of way. So there's another ten feet that you couldn't do anything with because there's an easement there. What you're talking about being 27 feet. If you're 27 feet from the right of way, that kind of becomes an irrelevant question. But it certainly right. has to be looked at. That's right because it's it's 10 feet from the edge of yeah, the right of way. What we're talking about being 25. But yes, yeah, if we, we, were, don't, we don't really know where the edge of the right of way is. But if we were to approach on that, it's 10 feet from it. I understand. Yes, and that is part of the deed. Yes. Okay. Other questions for Robert? We can, we can ask questions again after mm -hmm. we hear from about ours. Okay. So do you want me to sit over here? Yes, mm -hmm. that would be. Um, and this is the part of the hearing where I ask if, uh, generally, first, if anybody would like to speak. And uh, I will say, I did get an email from Joseph McKechnie um, uh, saying that Ginger and I have fully reviewed the application and correspondence relating this and have no objection so long as constructed in place and placed as per the application. We'll, we will unfortunately not be in Jackson on Wednesday the 12th. Um, they're one of the butters. They're one of the butters. I'm sorry. Yes. Um, they're on the property on the north side. That's the forehead that I was describing. Okay. So are there? Uh, uh, we have a number of um, uh, individuals in the audience. Uh, are, if are, are there any butters who would like to speak, either in favor or uh, against, or make other comments about um, this application? Now is your opportunity to do that. Uh, my name is Walt Kierens, and this is my wife Kathy. We live across the street uh, from the property. We review the application and the drawings, and uh, it looks to us as if it will be a nice improvement to the property, and hopefully the board will resolve any of the issues that are facing the uh, application, but uh, we're here in support of it. Thank you. Uh, anybody else? Wish to make comments? Yes. My name is Joe Bella. I too am in a butter of Robert, and uh, I want to echo what this gentleman said. Uh, have no issues, um, and I just hope it goes through for him. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, does the board have any other questions of anybody? Okay, uh, then that I, I will close the hearing, which means we now start deliberating on whether or not we should grant this. Um, and you know, we, um, well, I should I should add uh, well, is that there are five criteria that we must consider um, and find that. Um, the applicant has uh, has proved um, to grant the variance. Uh, some are fairly straightforward, and the, 
and some are, will require some more discussion, I'm sure. The one that refers to unnecessary hardship is, I'm sure, will generate some discussion on this board. But we will be speaking about each of those five criteria and trying to make a decision. Um, sorry? one. <laughs> well, we can we can jump to the unnecessary hardship test, or we can go through them one by one. Uh, okay. Okay. So the first test is the variance will not be contrary to the public interest. Um, and as guidance here, um, uh, and I'm actually looking at a, uh, a letter that um, um, Peter Malia wrote uh, not long uh, last December. Uh, that I think we've all seen. Uh, uh, you could but the, us of it. I'm sorry? You could sort of review it for. Yeah. So, the, the, but the criteria is, um, uh, at least in the most recent Supreme Court case, is would the variance alter the essential character of the neighborhood and would the variance threaten public health, safety, or welfare? Um, um, and those are, of course, not all that. There's a lot you one could read into that. Um, but this is uh, referred to as the uh, uh, not being contrary to public not interest. Not being contrary to public interest. Uh, so, is there any discussion on that? Um, I am concerned that you are cutting into a hill, going near a road, and and <coughs> the ways. I would uh, have given this a little thought before I got here. It would seem to me that if you're talking about altering the uh, nature of the, of the neighborhood. Uh, it certainly doesn't do that. It certainly doesn't, other than, as you say, uh, if you're coming to a hillside and that might cause a road to collapse, that could be a problem. Uh, I guess you could call it safe safety and uh, uh, health. Uh, but they're not going to be able to cut into that uh, slope without meeting uh, engineering guidelines because the uh, building code addresses that. It addresses cuts, it addresses anything over four feet, it addresses walls, it addresses all of that. So that's going to have to meet engineering standards and I think that will answer, I, in my mind, that will answer the safety uh, considerations. I think that might be one of the issues that I just put <coughs> into building as we previously talked a little bit about it's too expensive to build it on the, on the low side. but. I would really wonder about the cost of building on the high side. With it's, I think it's you have here. It's 11 feet, 18 feet from the, the base of the garage to the road. That's a pretty high, and only being well. Okay, you said 25. You're, I'll go by your paper saying 27 feet. Um, I don't know. Um, <coughs> it's it just just you know, I, one I of those think. things. I would say I don't think the cost of doing it one way or doing it the other another is something that the majority is not something no, for us to No, no, it's not our concern. concern. Well, I would agree. But I think it was not. something that was said, mm -hmm. and I just, I guess, responding to that, uh, about the choice being a cost choice. Um, I, I'm concerned, I guess, that the original association things, though, they're not there and they're not out anymore, the intent of the neighborhood was to have 50-foot setbacks. Um, it's mentioned twice. It's, it's, it's well. It's mentioned in the planning. The road being 50 foot road bed, and the town having a 50 foot setback. And then in the. But I but I see. I don't think the, the our decision on the variance. You know, whether whether or not another entity, the association, wants if it exists wants to enforce. A 50 foot setback or not, that's their decision. Our decision is whether or not we have to look solely at the zoning ordinance. Right, but I'm saying and in terms of changing the nature of the neighborhood, that's all I'm responding to. Yeah, well, and I guess one of the other thing is we have all the abutters, we have like I think two or three of the abutters in the audience. Three, three. Two in the, plus, two in the audience plus a letter. Plus a letter, so uh, that's. It's that's fairly substantial evidence. That at least the people most at concerned um, don't believe um, it is going to alter okay. their 
um, neighborhood. Um, and certainly not in their public, I mean, I mean the, the, in this case, the public interest is both the town, but also, I think, probably most importantly, the people who live nearby. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of hard to get too concerned about it if they don't, if they're not concerned. And the, and the character of the neighborhood is rural residential. Yes. And if you look at where this garage is going to be placed and you look at the trees and you look at it, it's residential. I mean, people have garages. That certainly doesn't alter the character when you go to garages. No. And, you know, that's actually something, uh, you know, the, um, or, or, who built, who, I mean, uh, my name, the name's the case, who, who built the, the, uh, the uh, uh, three houses up by, uh, uh, Kevin Glory, that was um, you mean Ann Peterson. Yeah, Ann Peterson, yeah. yeah. Um, it's, this is off off the side a little bit, but you know, Kevin at one point complained that the planning board allowed that to happen without uh, requiring any plantings or anything to screen those uh, th that activity there from. Was, there was no variance there. There's, there's no variance. The, the point I'm trying to lead to is, we should we. Grant the variance. One, we could apply include conditions to require screening or something, um, uh, if, if, as as if we felt that was an issue. Um, There's just some technical aspects of it being built, digging into a road that we can't answer. So if we do say this is uh, get, gets a variance, how can we ju um, judge what conditions would be reasonable? My my what my position would be that that's not for us to judge. If, if the building codes address that and we have a building inspector, then that would be addressed by the building inspector and the engineer who's designing it. It's not, now if, if you wanted to, I suppose if you wanted to place something, we would grant a variance and you wanted to say something about uh, the cut has to be provided uh, engineer uh, code uh, taken into consideration. Mean, you could certainly put that in there, but to me, I, I think that happens automatically. But I, that still could have, you could cut and still have a visual impact and change the character without it being part of the um, engineering code part. Yeah, if you look, but if you look at the way this thing has been drawn, and I suppose we could address that, um, we're not even going to see it from the road, so the cut is from the standpoint of changing the character of the neighborhood, you're not even going to see it. Yeah. Why don't we um, continue on to the next test? Spirit of the ordinance. The spirit of the ordinance is observed. And this is, this is, I mean, uh, often the contrary to public interest and the spirit of the ordinance observed are combined, are dealt with together. And in fact, the two criteria I mentioned, changing the essential character of the neighborhood and threatening public health, safety, or welfare, are, were, by the Supreme Court, tied together to both of those um, uh, criteria. Uh, also suggesting that if you answer, they, they tend to be answered in the same way. Um, so I, um, and in the spirit of the audience, you know, again, the whole purpose of zoning is to promote health, safety, and general welfare of the community. Um, part of it is, of course, making sure there's adequate setbacks uh, um, uh, to you know, allow um, access and make sure that things aren't too close together for fire and so forth. Um, you know, we have to make sure that you know, there's nothing in what in granting a variance here would substantially change uh, the whole intent and spirit of having setbacks from the roads. Well, and, and probably the first thing you need to do, um, I suppose, is to decide, at least for us, what we think the purpose of a 50-foot setback is. Is it to reduce congestion? Is it to uh, have a, a look? I, I mean, I, you know, we could talk about that. I don't know exactly what the purpose of the 57 foot setback is, my guess is it's to preserve the rural character of the uh, area. So it's not a matter of health, safety, um, welfare, it's a matter of aesthetics, which yeah. I think is terrific. Um, 
And uh, when I looked at this, I thought, well, uh, that's nice because you're not even going to be able to see it for all practical purposes uh, from the road. So I think it doesn't violate the spirit of the 50 foot setback. Well, it could be a sarcastic comment made at half the old barns and kind of sit on the roads anyway. So. Well, if you want to talk about safety, it's easier to put a fire out if it's closer to the road. <laughs> right? <laughs> now, this one, you just, the road's just on top, so yeah. <laughs> okay, um, the next test is substantial justice. And substantial justice um, is, um, you know, any loss to the individual... Um, that is not outweighed by a gain to the general public is an injustice. So here we're balancing um, the loss of use if we didn't grant this, uh, if, if, if by saying no to the variance with uh, whatever benefit there is uh, to the public and the general neighborhood by having the setback. So there's a, there's a balancing here um, on uh, you know, are, are we being, um, um, you know, weighing the, the, the benefit versus the, the harm to the individual. Um, this is also, here there's not much guidance. Um, the injustice must be capable of really, uh, the, the, I think that's all I'll say right now. It's pretty, that. it's pretty yeah. straightforward. Yeah. If, if not granting the variance isn't going to result uh, in more gain to the town, the general public, than a loss to the no. property owner, then you know, that's an injustice to the property owner. Yeah. But by not granting it, it's not saying that he can't build a garage. He just would have to choose a different location. Well, but if, if, you, if you looked at, let's say he said, well, okay, I'm going to build it over here. And uh, now he's now he's blocked uh, that small uh, space that is there to be able to get up to services septic system, or we put it in front of the house, and he's now um, lost the uh, aesthetics of his house. And what what is the gain to the to the public? Or if it cost him lots and lots more money. Well, money is Stay away from the cost. Stay away from, okay. away from cost. It's not our, no, it's not our concern. What's, what's the gain? No, that's a hardship. No. What is the gain to the public? You know, and, and that would mm -hmm. have to be the question, I think. What is the public gaining uh, by denying yeah. the variance? And I, I don't, I guess you can see where I'm going to. I, I just don't see any good gain in denying this variance, but we still have other criteria to talk about. Okay. And that one I, I don't have a problem with. I mean, in some okay. ways, um, uh, the next test is the next test is that the um, the value of the surrounding properties are not diminished. Um, and here we can both use our own judgment as to what we think property values are, um, as well as other information provided by abutters. Um, and, you know, the only guidance we really have is uh, objections to the variance by abutters may be taken as some indication the property values may be decreased, may be decreased. Uh, but they, uh, such objections would not require us to uh, uh, not grant the variance. Um, in this case, we don't have anybody objecting. In fact, we have people uh, saying in favor. So, I have a, I would have a difficult time thinking that um, what's proposed would uh, uh, diminish the property values of the neighborhood. Agreed. Okay. <laughs> so now we come to the hardship test. <laughs> and why don't I read this? Um, so unnecessary hardship means that owing to special conditions of the property that distinguish it from other properties in the area. I think that's the important clause. Um, no fair and substantial relationship exists between the general public purposes of the ordinance and the specific application of that provision to this property. Um, so again, 
there must be some special conditions of the property. Well, one of the special um, conditions they talked about was the, the frontage. But the other thing that's not a special condition to me is the hillside, because everybody's on a hill. So that sort of brings me to, there's still a lot of space here that is not frontage that is buildable somehow. And I'm sorry, there's a gas tank here, and there's a something there, and there's something there. That's really not, I don't see that as our issue. Um, So I, I, I'm having a hard time with the hardship sort of thing. Um, the special condition of this property, as opposed to all the properties around it, we have the map right here, yeah. is that they have very, very little buildable space because of the shape of the property, which is different than the properties around it. And if you take, if you take 10 feet and then 50 feet and then 25 feet here, you've got <laughs> practically no place to build. Yeah, here 50, you've got 50, 200, 50 feet, feet doesn't bother you here much you've here. Got, here you've got 176 feet, plus you've got, 170, you've got 348 feet deep. Um, these lots are all, I mean, they're narrow lots in relation to our current zoning by, you know. Yeah, they are. They're by our, our yeah. current yeah. zoning. Right. They but, are, but that was also zoning yeah, no, when I those were divided. That, but there's still space there. These people, they only have 150 feet here, and that's at the wide end of the lot. But what if these lots... Which is where the septic system is. So these lots weren't big lots to put big houses with a lot of exterior buildings on. Well, but we're talking about, is this different than, does it have special characteristics in relation to other properties? And, and when you look at the map and see that it has special characteristics. It's narrow, and it's choked. But they were all... Matt zoning at the time. Yeah. And they all had a spot to reasonably put a house. And they all did. So they all have that same issue. There isn't a lot well, of No, they don't really, because if you look at these lots, they're all significantly more buildable than this lot. We don't have the steepness of all these lots to make that conclusion. And if we just look at width and depth, there are other spots that to put the garage. They're saying because of the steepness, you can't put it on the other side. Well, they also said because it, they probably couldn't get a garage on the other side of that, of that uh, house <coughs> without violating the 25-foot setback. So it's just a matter of which I setback do you want to violate. Don't know if that really came out. Huh? Well, I, you can look, you can. So it's 150 can. feet, 157 feet. Yeah, that's here, 100. but you get a house here. And you've got a septic field here, and you've got you've got to have access to the septic field, which Robbie pointed out. There's a small section here, unless you want them to build a road down here. You've got 25 feet coming in here. The house here. I don't know what the distance between the corner of the house and that 25 foot setback is, but I'll bet you, you build a garage there, you're going to be in the 25 foot setback. It still leaves here. Oh, you want to put it out here? Yeah, I, 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 I'm. I'm I'm not sure we're supposed to we, read, we're supposed to design, to design it. The question is to find that criteria, what makes it truly exceptional. And these are all small lots with not a lot of buildable land on all of them for some reasons. So do we really feel that the long frontage is truly unique enough to call it a hardship? Well, it's not That's long, what we have to it's decide. It's not the long frontage, it's the way the frontage is constructed. Yeah. You've got this 200 seat, which, which squeezes this thing here to practically nothing. Then you've got a 10-foot um, uh, easement here and a 25-foot setback here. And, you, and at the deepest part of the lot, you've only got 150 feet. You don't have 150 feet here. No, you don't have yeah. 150 feet there. And yet all these other lots It's got 340 feet, 340 and, and feet take deep. Out, take out 50 feet of setback on, on this lot, and it doesn't really hurt that much. But it's a truly, again, unique that yeah, I think if you so. look at some of these other little lots, I mean, we're not going to sit here all night and, and figure out that Looks. there isn't a lot of buildable spots on some of these lots. No, that's true. And, and that's probably true for a lot of them up in yeah. here. He, his is the least buildable, I would say, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. none I'll of them are, are big buildable lots. Now, them sure. are big buildable lots, so now, does that become unique enough as an unnecessary hardship? Or is this something that was there, <laughs> it is what it is? You can't put a lot on some of these lots. No, it, it is what it is, but but 
he wants to play garage on it, and that's his. You can't say, well, you didn't have a garage when you bought the house. Oh, no, so, I'm not saying okay, that. Right. No, 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 no. So that's his right, except that he has to come to us for variance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what they're telling us is that if the uniqueness of this piece of property in relation to other properties around it um, causes him not to be able to do that, that would be a hardship if you've got more space on the other property. At, at least that's my opinion. I'm, I mean, everybody's entitled to their so, so that's that's my opinion. I think the Could, lot is let me unique enough. Push a I mean, little bit on Dave. Could it be a three car garage? Is that still okay? Four car garage. I, I, that's not what they're asking for. So, I mean, if they were, then I guess we could talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, the only place, the only thing I would probably object to is I'm not sure everybody's. You're not. You're not I don't think the issue. I think part of it is, is that. You're not guaranteed that you can build a garage the same way, you know, if you have one of the smaller lots that we always talk about up on Tyrell, that somebody's going to be able to build a four-bedroom house up there. Yeah. You, you just can't do it. No, that's so, right. So, but, but what this is saying to us is that unless there's a greater public good, unless there's a safety health, et cetera, et cetera, then we're supposed to grant the variance. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the last thing would be, well, his is just like everybody else's. Right. And, you know, everybody, nobody else could build a garage, so, you know, we don't grant variance. But I don't think his or, is like Or else. the opposite. Everyone has this problem up there, so everyone should just get a variance. Well, then... then so then what's then, the then purpose of the variance? Be, there wouldn't be a difference in this lot, but you can tell by looking at the lot that there's a difference. You know what I'm saying? I mean, as you look at the drawing, you can see that curve cuts the front of that lot down to next to nothing, 10-foot um, easement, 50-foot setback, 25-foot setback. Um, and the other lots are not like that. They have, they have uh, greater width. They have uh, greater depth, buildable depth. One of the things I saw in the houses when I drove around there were everybody had attached garages, those that did. I don't think I saw one that wasn't attached. So here we is there one up there? Oh, there is one. Okay. <laughs> How far is yours apart? Well, that's uh, probably no more than about uh, 20 feet. 20 okay. Feet. Yeah. It was just about three years ago, I think. We just bought it last year. I don't see. If somebody chooses to put it 15 feet away. So that's not a hardship, that's a choice. He chose, he's choosing to not put it in the driveway because it won't be pretty, but that's not a, a hardship. If, if, if they didn't have the gas tank in the ground, or they took the gas tank out of the ground and put it someplace else, and they moved the garage over to the house or closer to the house, you, you may not reasonably be able to attach it to the house. I don't know, angles. And so well, close, so close but, to us. But he'd still be in the setback. It just wouldn't be as much in the setback. Well, that might be a better thing. Why? Then why do we have setbacks at all? Well, why no, if you're, gonna, if you're going to have that, that's the point. Why do we have it for preservation of the rural character of the neighborhood? Yeah. And you, you've, got, you've got the thing sitting in a, in, a, in a hill with trees between it and the road. You saw the pictures. Yeah, and I you could, could hardly see the road from the, from the lot. You know, so anyway. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a second pack part of the necessary hardship test, which I think is a little bit easier one to address, and uh, or it's a similar question. The unnecessary hardship, uh, owing to special conditions of the property that distinguish it from other properties in the area, the proposal the proposed use is reasonable use. Um, I, you know. I, I think this might be more uh, relevant to where is, somebody is looking to a variance for you know building, you know having some sort of uh, kind of commercial property, cer certain kinds of commercial property or, or so forth. I don't think it really this is, is relevant use, here. It's a use. It's a use. Yeah. It's, 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 a it's a residential. Yeah. yeah the residential. use isn't really changing. Yeah. So, so I, the use changing. Yeah. So I, again, I think. 
you know, should I don't if we were I'm, I would be uncomfortable granting the variance granting a variance without knowing more precisely how big the variance is so I think again I'll go back to what I said at the beginning that um, if we seem likely disposed to going in that direction um, we should uh, try to get a more precise measurement of exactly what's proposed. So, uh, could be what Dave said, what difference does it make? Because if it's closer, it's farther away, it's... So it's still in the setback. It's still in the setback. So what difference? Why are we unburdening them with that thing? Hmm. Unless you can take it out completely. And that seems unlikely. <laughs> yeah. But would it matter if uh, we thought the entire garage was in the setback and maybe five feet of the house? I was in the setback too. <laughs> Depending on whether right away it is. Yeah, I mean, because remember, remember when they, you know, we had guys that were doing this, checking the zoning, and they were going right from the edge of the pavement. Yeah. Yeah. And said, "Oh, you got to be 50 feet back," and they were they were 12 or 15 yeah. feet off because the pavement wasn't in the sun on the right of way. And the way I so did it could it. be. We don't know. So, but uh, but what you're suggesting is. You know, really, it's not going to matter. Yeah, it's not going to be in compliance even if he moves it over 10 feet. No, but right? the visual impact, the, the issues we're talking about, preserving well, I, the integrity I of the zoning the abutters, I think the abutters talk about that, and I think from the picture, and I've, I've driven around up there. Um, I used to own land up there, just the next lot down. And frankly, I drove up there today. You, can't, you won't see the garage from the road. Well, that's certainly a concern, so maybe you're, you're right, Frank. Maybe we ought to be determining just how much space there is between the garage and the road, and then you know what kind of a, what's the depth of the buffer that you have. I mean, normally on an application like this, we'd expect to actually have a survey showing precisely where things are. Um, and I, I didn't, I felt we had enough to go forward, and rather than go back to Robbie and say, hey, no, this is a nice application, but I, we, when we said we wanted a plot plan showing how far off you were from the right of way, we really meant that. And you didn't, you they aren't quite there yet. Um, so I, I, you know, I, I guess I would propose that we still follow that, but I'm, I'm, I mean, if, if people, other people feel like Dave, Dave then I'm certainly Dave Potaski. I, I prefer to have a survey. I think we know where we stand in this, so it doesn't come back to bite us as future point in time. Yeah, I, I think we were, we were kind of in agreement that the purpose is for preserving the look and feel of the neighborhood, mm -hmm. we'll using that term, and we have had situations in the past where the depth of the buffer has become um, a problem after the fact. You know, that everybody says, oh yeah, yeah, there's a buffer, there's a buffer. Well, geez, it turned out the buffer was only six feet. Mm -hmm. And that we mentioned that a little earlier. Yeah. You know, the buffer wasn't heavily wooded enough. So it would be really nice to know just how deep this buffer is going to be and then be able to look at it and say, yep, you know, that's a good, heavily um, covered buffer. Well, then I, I think what I'd like to do is to take a straw poll then of how many people think that we should, at least, well, rather than go through each question, I think the only question at, at issue, in my judgment, is the hardship issue. Is that? Just the, I'm sorry. The, the only question. The only of the five criteria, the only criteria that is at issue, I think, among us is the hardship criteria. I mean, we, do we feel that uh, well, if, if the variance is contrary to public interest? Be, being concerned about the buffer on the basis of uh, what does it do to the, then we're back to another question. But I frankly think that will be easy to resolve because I think we're going to see that the buffer is probably yeah. something in the area 25 feet and there's a lot of trees in there. So we'll all we'll be satisfied then uh, that we have an adequate buffer and then it would be, yes, what's, what's a hardship? So 
Well, I think I'd like to do that is take a straw poll to see how many of the voting members would be willing to grant, a, a, a feel that they've met the hardship test, that uh, there is no fair and substantial relationship between the general public purposes of the ordinance and the specific application of that provision to this property, um, owing to the special conditions of the property that distinguish it from other properties in the area. Do we, uh, how many of the voting members believe that they've met that test? I think they've met the test. Um, I'm inclined toward that as well, though I think the case of knowing the exact amount is a good point, but I am inclined to and you're, in that direction. Um, you're more negative, I think? I think I'm a little more negative because I'm still not convinced it's truly that unique. And maybe once we get the, um, how would we deal with this with the next people to come in? And we've turned people down to going into the um, setbacks for less than this, you know, and trying to preserve. The, the boundaries. Yeah, I mean, remember we, uh, well, not most of the people on this board did not, but remember um, uh, who's the uh, lady up on Green Hill Road, uh, Helen, uh, Helen Mosley, is that? Mm -hmm. <coughs> mm -hmm. Helen Mosley. Helen Mosley, um, she asked for a variance. The garage. For Just her the garage. Corner. For the corner garage, and we turned that down. We turned it down. Yeah, well, I don't know why you turned it down, but it's, but it's clear. <laughs> well, I don't, I mean, because I wasn't here. But it's clear that these things are supposed to be decided on an individual basis. Yeah. See, that's true. That's true. That's, true. Away, that's, right. that's very true. That was a more congested area than I mean, here, it seems. This but is that's where and the and actual buffer becomes very important because of that. If she that's had other options, though. If I remember that case, there are other options. There's an option also, in this case, it's, you know, it's the <laughs> front of the house fronting the road, this case. Maybe it's, it's not a two-car garage. I mean, there are other options yeah. here, too. I mean, I think we're trying to accommodate what yes. people want to do, but I think there's a reality. These lots cannot take everything I, people I, may I, want I to do. The buffer is, is critical, um, and perhaps. Is, is the buffer going to be from the highway? I mean, it should, the highway right of way. I mean, there's 25 feet here, but. 15 feet of that from the hot top, 14 feet of that in my calculations was the right of way. So of that 25, 35 feet, 14 feet of it we're already into is still the right of way for the, the road. But that's still a buffer. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Talking about buffer. Yeah, I, think right. that's, I would say that's so, a good point. I mean, you can't build the right of way and, 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 without and being on that. And again, I mean, and again, we can attach conditions to this. We can say, yeah, you can build a garage, but it, it can't be this close. It has to be. You have to move it further away from the road another five feet, mm -hmm. um, um, and you have to have certain kinds of trees on it or something like that. I mean, we we have the ability to attach conditions to um, the grant of the variance that we think will further the public interest um, um, or deal with what concerns we may have. I mean, we have to look at going forward too. Someone putting a second floor on this and heating this, it and making it living space. I mean, this, that, this, putting a structure in a setback. So yeah, this, you this have is, to really think about this it. This is my concern too. I mean, I didn't ask the question on the, on the, where I would vote. Uh, uh, I'm actually not sure. And Martha, you're more negative. What's this? I'm more negative on this. I'm not okay. real comfortable because I mean, that's a good point I hadn't even thought of. What's going to stop for putting a second floor? It's hardship they have to have a second floor because the next people, not these people, they sell to the next, because the variance is on the house, not on the people. It has That's nothing right. to do with who lives there. So the next generation comes through of whomever, and the only way they can survive is to have an apartment, or they get old and they need people taking care of them. So, I mean, there's all these different things. We start, you know, they can go up 35 feet. In can, you put a, well, can you put a you condition can. on it? You can put, yeah, you can put a condition on it. Yeah. It takes care well, of they, they can't go up 35 <laughs> feet. Because that would be expanding the nonconformity, so they can't. They come for a variance. Without coming for a variance, they can make it 50 feet if they get a variance. One of the things that we're concerned about is is the uh, effect on the neighborhood. We decided that the 50 foot is to preserve the rural character, and if you stuck another 35 feet on top of that, or another 15 or 20 feet on top of that garage. 
then you'd have an argument that doesn't do that. One of the reasons this works is because, as you can see from your drawing, you'll be lucky if you can see the peak of the thing okay. from the road. You know, but again, I, second story I would that. say, I mean, non-voting member, but I, I would say that that's not the question here. I mean, if somebody else wants to put more on top of this, that's a problem for another board. Is that, well, it's, it's or it's a view. different problem for this board if they come back in It's again. to make sure that we don't leave any Open the barn doors open, open right. for other things to happen. Put it as a we, we could put a condition on it. Right. Point. Okay, we could put a condition on it. Yeah, put conditions on it. Yeah, we can't go up but any we are, But we're certainly signaling to the community what might be allowable. And we have to be careful that we don't have a lot of other, I mean, where do we where do we draw this line? Mm -hmm. It's the uniqueness of the property. I, I think the right we're following the guidelines that we're supposed to follow yep. in this particular case. I don't think we're we're signaling to the community that we're looking at you know what the Supreme Court has had to say. We're looking at uh, what the people have had to say who study these things, and we're trying and we're following the guidelines. From from my reading of the guidelines, it's what's it's the property's unique. That's why the variance is granted. Not because everybody can build yes. 50 feet in the setback. It's something about this property that makes it unique that allows you to do that. But just because you have a unique that. property doesn't mean you necessarily get a variance oh, on everything oh, either, too. Absolutely. No, I was so, just saying comparing it to other cases right. is not necessarily all that valid. If, if, we looked at, if we looked at other lots up there in the city, most of the lots around them, if they want to build a garage, could build a garage. Uh, then this would be truly unique, wouldn't it? Yeah, and that's mm -hmm. what I think we would see. You know, that under the circumstances that exist on this property, um, they're different enough from other properties around it that the ability to do anything here is unique. That's what I think we would find. I think we would want to. <laughs> don't no, no. I don't know if you want to investigate that either. That's a hard one. No. It's a hard one. Well, so judgment call. Mm -hmm. I think we have two leaning in favor, two leaning against, and mm -hmm. one who I'm really on the fence on this one. I'm not sure what I would do, but we have a non-voting member who would be in favor of granting variance. Yeah, I think it's unique. I've since I'm not voting, I can, and uh, there is no vested interest here. I used to own a piece of property, <laughs> the next piece of property down the hill from there. Uh, that has much less of a problem, but you've still got the, what Rob's pointed out is the, the frontage. The frontage is all along here. The, the other lots, the, the lots that go straight back in, you've got a lot more, you got a lot more to work with. This thing is squeezed. And um, the, um, I think that makes a huge difference. And uh, again, as far as the visual impact, I think it's pretty much non-existent. Um, I don't think we have enough information to really know about that. <clears throat> so we, I'm we just telling you what I've seen. Yeah. yeah okay. Let's go survey. So what I think we're coming out to is, you know, depends on how I mean, everybody's go. heard where we're going with this. Um, that the uh, is to adjourn this um, to another meeting, which I'll announce a date and time, um, with request that there be a uh, actually get a plot plan with survey that shows exactly how far we are from the right of way, um, and. Once we have that information, meet again and aren't you going to look at the cover too? What's the travel right away? Yeah. Yes. Because we're talking about visual impact. So yes. Not only from the right away, which would be interesting, but also from the yeah, travel, right, travel right, away. right away. So we want the location of the pavement right. mm -hmm. um, uh, there. Um, and, and the location of the houses. Everything. Well, and the location of the the precise location of the proposed garage and the house in the house. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, We've talked a lot about visual impact. Isn't the the vegetation there an issue too? Then, yeah. In other uh, words, you could have 
10 feet with, you know. No, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I, if I were to vote yes, I would, I would only be able to vote yes if we had some kind of condition that, um, that there be foliage screening this. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> So, our, um, so the, I guess the next question, well, so, and I don't think, I don't think there, my sense is there's not, there are not votes to say yes tonight. Um, I would say you're right. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Unless, unless so, you say yes. Um, <laughs> or no. <clears throat> uh, so, um. I mean, I'll ask Robbie and uh, Robert, are you willing to go forward with the, having a survey done and come back to us? Yeah, I, okay. I think it would be. I, I, think, I mean, Robbie, you have some idea. I mean, this is uh, how much a survey would cost. I mean, this is, uh, yeah, this, I'm, I'm, I'm going to yeah. guess from the five. Probably, probably a thousand dollar range. I don't know. We don't, we don't need your whole lot. We just really need the location, the specific, precise location of the proposed garage, uh, the precise location of the right of way, and the precise location of the travel of the pavement. And were we to grant a variance, it would be for specifically that. So, you, you know, um, Andy would be very interested in making sure that whatever footing you pour would comply with what that proposal is. And we may still, after seeing everything proposed, suggest that yes, but we want to move back another five feet or whatever. Um, and you, I think you heard that the other issue was uh, some kind of requirement for screening or maintaining the trees or, or not cutting trees down or whatever. Um, I presume you'd be okay with that as well. No. Yeah. yeah, the whole area is wooded anyways. So and um, I think, yeah, I think to convince ourselves of, right. of that, we need the location of the garage staked out um, as part of that survey. Um, and you know, I have no idea how long it would take to do a survey. Normally we have meetings on Wednesdays, uh, the third Wednesday of the month, so the next meeting would be the, uh, there's a second Wednesday. Second Wednesday. Third. It's usually third. the third. You third Wednesday. So, um, because of the holiday. we'd be <coughs> talking about <coughs> January, whatever. <laughs> um, is that are you okay with that? Um, I have it right now that the third would be the 16th. The, 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 16th. Third, the, the so third Wednesday of January would be the 16th of January. January 16th. 16th. Yeah. I know surveyors have hard, hard times doing things when there's a lot of snow. Yeah. So in, you, know, you don't really have much time to actually have this happen. Right. Um, we can certainly look at where the stakes are after the snow is there, but we've got a hard time. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not going to get really built for most of the winter anyway. Yeah. 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 So we're, we're going to. Okay. It's not a disaster if we can't get the survey done now, but that's going to be done later. We appreciate you considering it. Well, careful, we're not there yet. <laughs> no, you covered the issues. Yeah. I have no problem with how you covered the issues. Thank you. So I will, I will adjourn this meeting to, now, and technically speaking, um, uh, to have new information actually kind of requires. I know, new notice. New no, well, no, or public hearing. Yeah. Or unless I adjourn, I can adjourn the hearing to. Continuation? Continue, I'll continue the hearing. Continue the hearing. Uh, I'll reopen. I mean, we'll uh, reopen the hearing. Yeah. The, the point that the point that uh, Joan and I are dealing with is if you give us the new documents, in theory, 
all the butters should have a chance to come a in chance again. to comment on yeah. that new information. Yeah. Um, so, but by adjourning this meeting, adjourning the hearing, and reopening the hearing briefly it's on adjourned. January 16th. Um, Continue, okay. We're continuing the we, meeting. We're continuing the meeting. Till January 16th. Yeah. Till the 16th of January. That's right. We and, and, never adjourned. Yeah. And, and we will have an opportunity right. on the 16th to those of others or anybody else, any interested party, uh, wishes to comment on the new information how it gets presented, which is really just the survey, man. Mm -hmm. um, they'll have that opportunity. And, and we'll make an this news. All right. There will be an e news anyway. So the continuing the of the hearing. It will be announced, just yes. not on the paper. I also will tell my our friends, uh, my peers on the CBA, I uh, expect that there'll be another uh, um, hearing on the 16th as well uh, for a, um, an appeal of a decision from the selectman uh, denying a building permit for a trailer on Route 16 up by the Maynards uh, at Blake House. Uh, because in the view of the selectmen, um, the zoning ordinance uh, prohibits facilities for tenting and trailers in the village district, and that is the village district up on Route 16. Hmm. So it's an appeal, not an area. It's an appeal. appeal. Okay. Uh, laws. Their interpretation of the zoning ordinance. So we'll have, I, I guess this is just saying we'll have plenty to talk about. Read the uh, next section, right? Can you read that section again? It started at 5 o'clock. <laughs> so with that, uh, we'll, have, we'll, we'll get together again January 16th. Uh, and hopefully you can get that information to me beforehand. Keep me informed. And do I have a motion to adjourn? No, no. To uh, continue. 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 Okay, continue. Second. So we're not adjourned. All, we're not adjourned. All we're continuing. continuing. I'm going to go to Okay. Yeah. 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 See you there. <laughs> it turned out not to be an issue, but one of the things Aline told me, my special